This channel is not for children, neither is it for the weak of heart or mind. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings, my friends, foes, and evil minions. It's a fucked up time we're living in right now. Disease, divisiveness, riots. 2020's been a hell of a year. And for many of us, it's like nothing we've seen in our lifetime. But in truth, these last few months have been a microcosm of what reality has been for humankind since the beginning of time. Fuck what cable news tells you, because if you think this is the worst it's ever been, then you don't know history. The problem with life in modern society is, we got it too damned easy. Truth is, for hundreds of thousands of years, we didn't have it all that easy. There was a constant, real threat to life and liberty. Now, do you really think this nation, the United States, is more divided than it's ever been, really? Then I take it you've never heard of the Civil War where six to 700,000 Americans were killed. And if you were to adjust that to today's population, that would be six to seven million dead in a four year period killed by their fellow Americans. You, you think the COVID's bad? Sure, it's, it's no walk in the park. I should have fucked don't want to get it, but give the Spanish flu a try where you wake up in the morning feeling fine feel a little ill by mid-morning, high fever in the afternoon, and dead by sundown. Or the basic fact that up until about 100 years ago, families had about a dozen kids or so because the odds were a third weren't going to make it to adulthood due to childhood diseases and accidents. And hey, how about hunger and starvation? That was a real threat for most of the world's population up until quite recently. Do you think the people of the past could have ever imagined that there would be a nation where the poor are fat? Or do you think the cops in America are horrible and, and that we live in a fascist, totalitarianist regime? Try telling that to the 100 million people who were killed in the 20th century under true totalitarianism. Now, I'm not saying we should just shut up and pretend that everything is okay and just take the shit dished out by the powers that be. Now, there are, there are problems, real problems, but what I'm saying is one should put all this in perspective and accept the fact that we got it easy, too easy, but it's human nature to struggle. And if we can't find a real struggle, we over-exaggerate and invent one. Now, you're probably wondering, what the hell does this have to do with the left-hand path? It has everything to do with the path, because the left-hand path is about struggle, but a different kind of struggle. Some might think it's about a belief in Satan, Lucifer, the ancient gods, or invoking demons. That's an aspect of it, or it can be. And I'm not going to get into the real or not real argument. It's a waste of time, because the atheists and theists both argue from the same shallow perspective, 
while missing what's it, what's really important, which is what you get out of it, out of your journey on this path. Apotheosis, self deification, individuation, enlightenment, whatever you want to call that goal you're trying to reach on the path is a struggle. And in the greater philosophical and psychological perspective, it's about a struggle you are having with the inner self, a personal struggle. I understand that struggle. I understand that just below the surface of my waking reality is, is an abyss of madness and horror and that the surface we all stand upon is fragile. It's called being human, being alive. But what helps me to cope is the empowerment I get from left hand path philosophy. And for all of you too, this path, this path of the individual should be leading to psychological wholeness and that should be the most important reason why you're on it I can't help but notice that many of those that say they're on the left-hand path are miserable complaining and blaming others society for their woes in life and for some of you it appears the path itself is contributing to your misery and I think I know the reason why it's because you won't face the darkness. Because the darkness, that shadow self, is frightening. Thus you turn away from it, missing, missing the whole point. What's going on is that many of you, when you left religion, that religion you were raised in, emptied your psyches, creating a God-shaped hole. So now you're disconnected from what Carl Jung called a symbolic life. Thus that hollowness, that void has been filled with nihilism and despair and the horrors of the dark absolute are beginning to seep in. I know many of you got on the left hand path out of childish rebellion and not for apotheosis so you try and plug that hole in your psyche. But if you do this then you don't understand what the left-hand path is about. It's about embracing those demons that spill forth from the inner hell. It's not about ignoring the abyss and what lies therein, pretending it isn't there. It's about facing it. In conclusion, a significant part of the left-hand path is about what Nietzsche called Amor Fadi, love of fate, taking responsibility and facing whatever life throws at you. And that includes facing the inner horrors. It's about struggle, the real struggle, the greatest struggle of all, the struggle with the self. <laughs>